Hi, everybody. Welcome to an all ASMR edition of Star Citizen Life. <laughs> I'm your host, Jared Huckabee. And if you've never seen Star Citizen Life before, it's where we take about a week out of the end of our day and we hang out with our Star Citizen developers. Oh, shh. We we uh we ask them your questions that you submitted on Spectrum. I'm just seeing how long I can drive Pete crazy. How you doing, Pete? All, good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sorry, sorry, that was enough. Uh, let's get to the show. Uh, uh, joining us on the show this week, uh, we have. Uh, so, uh, that? Okay. We have four members of the uh, eponymously named Team Kean uh, on the show. Oh, three members of the Team Kean, then whatever the hell Chris is, uh, <laughs> joining us on the show uh, to discuss uh, a follow-up to our ISC episode on EVA, uh, uh, personal interaction, and uh, default item action. Uh, so. What we're done messing around. Let's get to the show uh, and introduce uh, Kian, Chris, and Nez and Gennady. How you doing, guys? Pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah good. How are you? you? <laughs> Sorry for the intro. It just. I was excited. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Kian, let's start with you. You are you are the. Uh, uh, is your team still named Team Kian? I thought that was a working title. Does it have a new title now? Not yet. No. Not, not yet. So it's as still devastated just, as I just am. Just Team Kian. Okay. Tell people who you are and what you do. I'm Keen, a lead gameplay programmer on Team Keen. <laughs> and and what 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 is Team Keen? Is it all just programmers? Is um, it? Yeah, there's seven engineers and myself. So, what's the difference between a programmer and an engineer? Same thing, just different words. That's fine. Could call them coders as well if I wanted. Okay, uh, Gennady, introduce yourself. Tell everybody who you are and what you do. Uh, I'm senior gameplay programmer. Uh, Oh, I'm Gennady, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Uh, I'm working on EVA stuff. Like currently it's just flying and later we move to Attach and Surface Reversal and stuff. Yeah. I really thought you were going to say Senior Gennady. I was excited, like the Senior Gennady. Yeah. Um, Ines, who are you? What do you do? Hello. Well, uh, my name is Ines, like I said. Uh, Team Kim, although I, I don't I don't know if I if approve of the name of the team. <laughs> I don't think you approve of the name of the team. Uh, and yeah, I'm a gameplay programmer uh, and uh, I've been at CIG for five years now. Five years already? I know, time, just time flies. Uh, we, we skipped that. How long have you guys been, Kian and Kennedy? How long have you been here? How long? Um, I go for Kennedy. It's for two and a half years. Two and a half years? I'm um, five years. Five years? Yeah. And Chris is part of the furniture now. <laughs> yeah, Chris has been here about as long as I have. Chris, tell everybody who you are and what you do. Hi, I'm Chris. Uh, I'm a designer. I'm an assistant designer. And I have out guys like these uh, support the team with design. Uh, so what's the relationship between designer and programmers? Like, is, 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 can, you, can you do anything without them? No. And do you guys really need him? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we do. I'd like to say no, but we'll <laughs> <laughs> um, So yeah, so today's, uh, today's show, um, as off-kilter and weird as it is, it's been that kind of day. Um, we're follow following up, like I said at the beginning of the show, on our, I on our ISC episode, I was about to say IAE episode, uh, really the wrong part of the year, uh, on our ISC episode uh, just uh, three weeks ago about EVA and default item actions and, uh, and the personal interaction system. Uh, we solicited questions from you, the Star Citizen viewer, on Spectrum, uh, the bespoke communications platform available at robertspaceindustries.com. If you've never seen it, go check that out. It's where we collect questions. Uh, we let uh, our group of, of questionees, is that what, when you're questions, questionees? Not questioners, but uh, questionees, choose the questions, uh, which you have done, and I'm, I'm just gonna sit here and go through the ones you've picked out. Um, so let's just jump into it, because people are probably tired of my antics at this point, I know I am. Uh, I see a lot, look at this list, I see a lot of questions for EVA, so we'll try to bounce around a little bit. Um, but let's start with an EV one right out the, EVA one right out the gate. Uh, 
Uh, this one came through uh, uh, quite a bit. I think uh, this one was particularly, who, who, who was credited this? The Something Wookie? Was this, was this the Wicked Wookie? It's a question from Wicked Wookie. Thanks for submitting. Uh, will we keep up our momentum if we jump out of a moving ship in space? Answer it. <laughs> so, yeah, so it's a complicated question. We don't have like real, real world simulation for this, so it's not keep all momentum. Part of it, of its momentum will be keep like uh, I believe it's thirty six meter per second maximum we have, and if you use thruster pack. Raster pack will enable like speed limit for this, which will be at least for now it's six meters per second. That's what we have. Right. So why is it that we don't have? Why is it that it's not just as pl as people might expect it? Uh, why haven't we built an entire universe of, of, of fully physicalized uh, entities like? What? Well, because because yeah, physics is cool, but we want to get, make a game with a which you can play if people say can uh, accelerate indefinitely what could it be like people like, <laughs> that's, that's insane <laughs> yeah you, we can do it but that's so it's well, one of those things it's got it's got to be it's got to be accounted for amongst all the other physics related uh, necessities of the game ships and items and stuff like that uh, Obviously, I think anybody who's followed our programming for a while knows uh, just how strenuous phys physics is on you know CPUs and the process and stuff like that. So we'll always bring it to the. We're 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 often quoted as saying we'll bring it to the point of realism, then bring it to the point of fun. But the close cousin of that is bring it to the point of realism, and then bring it to the point of what's performative for the universe. Yeah. And yeah, so having a having just a one one fully Newtonian thing is a little much for a you know giant fully formed uh, universe with as many players as we're hoping to get in there. But we have a lot of things that can approximate it like you talked about. Yeah. So, okay. For like regular activities, it will be enough. Okay. Uh Ticorico, I hope I'm saying that right, uh, has a question. Will we be able to turn off the F indicator in some way? I'm, this is about uh, a personal interaction, I'm guessing. Uh, many like the fact that no UI items show up on screen until you enter interaction mode. Uh, Machinima would look really bad with a whole bunch of Fs on objects. Just show those objects some respect. <laughs> <laughs> so we are going to support in 3.23 uh, the option to disable the, the actual the button prompt, so the F part of it, uh, but the, the name of the interaction will still display. Um, and that's, it's not over every item, it's only one item at a time, and it's only an item that you're looking at. Uh, so, you know, if you've got peripherals, different peripheral vision, you're not, they're not going to see um, names popping up all over the place. Uh, in terms of turning everything off, not for 323, uh, but we do want to consider like accessibility options, and obviously machine is a huge thing for our game as well. So, uh, not 323, but it's definitely something we're considering. Yeah. Uh, lots of games have a, like, like, like a no UI toggle. For, for just this reason, you know, it's like, hey, you know, informed consent, as long as you know what you're doing, you know, you hit a button and all UI elements disappear. Mm -hmm. I could see that being something that we would consider. Yeah, down the line, certainly. Yeah. Uh, Chris is obviously a very uh, cinematic individual, and if, if, if you tell him, like, yeah, this is necessary for them to make, yeah. you, know, the, you know, to continue making these amazing machinimas, I, 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 don't, I don't foresee a problem with no, improving that. Yeah. I'm sure I like that. Yeah. Ah, uh, let's see. Capitost. Hey, Capitost. Welcome. Uh, since EVA will require fuel eventually, after 323, since EVA, will re since EVA will require fuel, how do we refuel that, and does your equipment weight affect fuel consumption? Um, so I can maybe answer the first bit and get into maybe the second bit. Um, yeah. So with the refuel, there's, there's, there's two options. Again, not in the 323 because we're not using fuel for that. Um, it's worth mentioning that EVA fuel is, in law, meant to be compressed nitrogen. So this might make more sense with that in mind. Uh, so if you're in atmosphere, you just you refuel automatically. Um, and the idea behind that is that you, we want EVA to be you know, accessible and, and just to be able to use it as often as possible. Um, but when you're in, out in the void, uh, you should be considering how you're using your fuel. So every time you step out that door, 
we want you to be in a situation where you're ready to go, but you've then got to consider how you use your fuel on the go. Um, and then in terms of refueling while you're out there, we support med pen injections, or it's not med pen, it's a refuel injection, but it's the same thing you're used to with med pens and you know, um, symptom masking pens where you just jab yourself uh, with one of those. Yeah, did you want to talk about the, um, what's the other aspect of the question? Sorry, my mind's gone blank. Uh, uh, <laughs> just, uh, will, will the weight of your equipment affect fuel consumption? No, no, I was just talking about mass, wasn't it? Does, does mass affect it? I said weight. Yeah. But oh, mate, yeah, sorry, sorry. Um, if mass does, answer that one. I've, I misunderstood the question. In that case, um, at the moment, I don't think it's a big factor, but we definitely want to look into that moving forward. Um, I don't know when, but for 323, I don't think it is. So, so for 323 at least, well, the fuel isn't in 323, so you're just going to... Correct, yeah. Yeah. So when the first version of, of fuel comes online, people aren't going to have to manage the, oh, I can't use this, I can't, don't want to carry this weapon or this, you know, rail gun with me because it's going to burn up fuel faster. Correct, yeah. Yeah, yeah moving forward, so we do want to have, um, like, different roles for armor, you know, we have that in consideration, so you might want to put on a certain um, armor type to go out in EVA and it's better at that, or it's, it's light to weight, that kind of thing, uh, but that's, that's further down the line. Yeah, um, different kinds of armors could have different amounts of fuels, uh, di possibly even different, like thruster layouts be more effective or efficient maybe? Or? Um, so thruster layouts at the moment aren't in consideration, not to say never, but um, it, it's more about EVA fuel capacity uh, and, and also not all armor is going to be doing EVA, uh, have EVA thrusters on them, it'll be you know, just specific armor types, some backpacks, that kind of thing. Um, but again, we want pros and cons for armor. So, you know, you, you imagine a whole matrix of different armor types, different abilities, what they're good at, what they're bad at. Um, that's the, the goal. Okay. Uh, Weeborg, 1978. Hey, Weeborg, it's been a while. Uh, we don't usually get the names here, but you guys gave me the names, and I, I recognize some of these names. Weeborg, Weeborg's been around forever. <laughs> um, uh, he says, if I am in loot goblin mode, can I still loot a corpse at once, or do I have to click on every single item now? Uh, so yeah, I can take that one. Um, yeah, so uh, certain items like uh, uh, consumables, throwables, we'll have an option to take all of those groups per group. Uh, one of the uh, great pieces of feedback we had on the inventory, for example, was like the option to have to move all. So obviously this loot screen is trying to get it more like uh, easy for the player to loot, uh, NPCs uh, and things like that. So yeah, we will have the option. Mm -hmm. I feel like some of those interface options probably had to change a bit from Squadron to the PU because the just for the sheer number of things in the yes. PU that can be looted. <laughs> Yes, it was. Uh, we yeah, it's a it's a concern from the in terms of the user experience, uh, uh, UI design uh, that we had to make a, a had to rethink and uh, make a few changes uh, compared because uh, like we said, uh, in PU we have a great number of items that we have to fit in this one screen that's supposed to be easy to read, quick. So yeah, that was a bit of a challenge. Uh, How's that work going? Yeah, it's going, going, going well. <laughs> we'll be hearing about it soon. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think we have a ISC on it in four weeks or something like that. I can't get Cool. Uh, let's see. Uh, Daisy. Hi, Daisy. Uh, can you hold a box while in EBA? Yes. Yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> so, Tell us more. So... The level of polish we're going to get with that isn't 100% right now because for 323, because we've got animators animating their eyeballs out, is that a thing? But they're, they're, they've got a lot of work on. Um, and that's one of the things they're working on. Um, the state it'll be in for 323, I'm not 100% sure yet, but it's definitely planned for them. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's probably worth mentioning that whilst you're in EVA, you can have 200 objects, uh, but whilst you're attached to services, again, not for 323, that's a different feature, um, you need your hands. So 200 objects. Um, I'm like attached to my belt by a carabiner and just <laughs> walk with it behind me. Uh, the Batman who laughs. All right. Uh, will we optionally will we optionally be able to stand upright in EVA as we do now? So for three twenty three, no. We're focusing um, solely on the prone stance, and that's the, the lying down stance. 
Um, just really want to give a great experience for that. So there's a lot of animation work that goes into that. Um, the guys are doing a great job with it. Um, but yeah, the, the focus is the prone stance, and that's twofold. Uh, it's prone because when you attach, again, not an EVA, it's the, the zero G traversal thing where you attach to a surface, that's prone as well. So you get a seamless transition between the two. Um, but also the silhouette uh, that you maintain whilst you're moving through a ship. If you imagine flying like that through a, a corridor, um, it's a lot less awkward if you're doing that than that because you occasionally you bump into things and yeah. Um, so for now, 323, no, um, but obviously we're where you guys are interested in it. So you know, we'll see what we get down the line. Yeah. It's all, it's all about just building out that systemic experience at the moment where all the features just work together. Yeah, yeah. And then the stand-up stance doesn't quite work with that at the moment, so it would need some more thinking for future. Yeah, I, 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 I would imagine there are some old sci-fi uh, uh, folks who remember, you know, Star Trek, the motion picture, and the, the, like the, when they did their EVA, it was always in that standing stance. You know, uh, two thousand one would use it in the standing stance, and whatever. Mm -hmm. there, there's a certain vintage sci ness to that. So, you know, obviously, it's not. We can all admit it's not the most opportune or, or, or the most visually pleasing way to get about, but you know, a toggle to, yeah, I want to, I want to be some, you know, I just want to do my classic, <laughs> you know, thing might might be nice. And it looks, it's uh, the expanse, yeah, the expanse. It's really cool in that. So like, I can tell you. Do they do the stand up in the expanse? Too? Yeah, you can hear the little clicks as they walk around the ship because they've got little. Um, I wasn't even thinking about traversal. I was just thinking about they used, to, you, they, used they would just fly just as you see you know Spock you know, flying out to Beecher. Yeah, he's just yeah, flying yeah. upright, yes, yes. just flying upright the whole time. So With the, the epic music blaring. Yeah. Yeah. And then of course you know we, uh, we had talked about eventually uh, looking into like back uh, jetpacks or or MMOs, M MMUs you know the man maneuvering units and stuff. Those would probably be. Yeah, if you get to those, I imagine, that, yeah, because... Although, yeah. I kind of want a rocket, if I'm going to have a jetpack, I kind of want a rocketeer. <laughs> like this. With the chewing gum, like, attachment. Yeah, we had that question, right? It, it's, somebody asked, oh, and JJ was here, somebody asked, so I'm going to put that to you. Somebody asked if we could do the, you know, the Christopher Reeve Superman and put one, one arm up. Can we get that as a toggle? Not yet. <laughs> Not three phones <laughs> but, you know. I'm going to talk to Bender. I'm sure if I ask Bender... I, I'm sure Bender would be interested. Actually, uh, 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 Ben Simmons just sent me a message saying that they're, they've got the show on the big ninth floor screen nice. right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh. Bender, if you're watching, watch oh, Superman <laughs> Buzz. <laughs> okay. uh, let's see. Um, Ooze? <laughs> I'm remembering why we stopped reading out the names. <laughs> Ooze? Right. Uh, previously, you talked about magnetic boots, but for now, we're only seeing the hand climbing animation system. Are magnetic boots in the status? Are magnetic boots in the status of important priority in development, or can we just go further without them? Yes. Yeah, so again, for three twenty three, no magnetic boots. Um, it's not something we're actively looking at at the moment because, as Kim was saying, you know, that ecosystem of EVA uh, uh, attachment. Uh, doesn't really fit into that, but that's you know it's not seen everything ever. It's certainly something we're aware people are interested in, so we'll definitely consider it. And, and to be clear, even that even the hand climbing we showed, that's not three twenty three either. That's, that's correct. It's, yeah. it's looking yeah, farther. It's, it's, it's looking farther ahead. Yeah. Uh, there was some confusion about that after the episode aired and whatnot. So just want to make right, sure. Right. Right. It's it's you know we were looking at what came three twenty three, and then we were excited to show you know what was coming down the line. Um, I've kind of already started, haven't I? I can't just stop saying names now. <laughs> scrub Scrub 420. <laughs> uh, let's just move on now. Uh, will you allow EVA speeds above 10 to 15 milliseconds? In the ISC, we saw someone flying past Jericho going super fast and decoupled. Uh, currently, we can even have this speed. If you use grapple hook mode, along with thruster pack, so if you use grapple hook and drag yourself, it will be mm, exactly 10 meters per second. So yeah, you got it. Yeah. But not quite, go. not quite the 15. Not 15, but yeah, middle ground. And that's, that's to say, like, these are the speeds we think are fun. The speeds that we enjoy while we're playing it right now, but you guys haven't had them, right? So you'll be obviously be able to give us feedback and say if you're enjoying them and if you need to go a little bit faster maybe, but. Like, it's what we think works well. Um, 
but yeah. we're, we're in development still. So, so yeah. what was what was the so, so just to be just to be clear, you're, you're saying the ten mill saying the ten milliseconds now and stuff like this. We, we were talking about the thirty six milliseconds before that was jumping out of a vehicle. Uh, yeah, that's the overall cap around yeah. thirty six. I think is the overall cap for an actor's movement um, in the game at the moment. Yeah. Um, so just I, I see some folks in the questions. Uh, Toaster Pyro was looking for <laughs> Toaster Pyro was looking for some you know clarity. Thirty six is the cap. Jumping out of a fast-moving vehicle until you eventually, you know, slow down, mm -hmm. this, and then you just just you on your own with a grappling hook, you can potentially get yeah. up to ten. Okay. And just to clarify, when I'm saying grappling hook, we're talking about uh, the tractor beam. Tractor beam, thing. yeah. yeah. There's, there's no physical ice hooks. Not yet. <laughs> not yet. For three twenty-three, it's just tractor beam. And no, I'm not confirming them. I'm just uh, no lat. I feel like that was just the same question. Yeah, you, know, you picked this question, you picked the same question. Yeah, that's a problem. I'm skipping this. Sorry, Nolak, you had your question answered. It was the same question. Uh, let's see. Uh, Spectre32 at Spectre01. That's a mouthful. Writes, how will NPC interactions work with the new uh, uh, Pi system without inner thought? Ah, so inner thought. Of that sense hasn't gone away uh, so we've still got the conversation dialogue options that, that, that's, that's unchanged um, we do interact with corpses differently uh, who so, doesn't oh wow well, <laughs> um, yeah you get the prompt uh, when you're interacting with a corp or anything right um, so that's that's changed but in terms of if you're interacting by having a conversation that's that's still the same that hasn't, that hasn't changed so no thought's not going away no, in a thought still left, got conversation choices, and obviously the pit menu, that's you know, in a thought of some degree, that's, that's staying around, so. Okay. Uh, Garnif asks, how will the new uh, Pi system interact with and control ship dashboards and consoles? So for 323, it's very similar to what it is right now. Um, you still have to go into interaction mode, move the cursor around. Uh, instead of the floating text, you, as in to choose the different interactions, uh, you'll see a prompt now, and it'll just be one option to click on. Uh, but then you bring up the wheel uh, with uh, right click instead of left click. And then you've got the, the options that you would normally see as a list there on the wheel to select from. Uh, moving forward, sometime after 3.23, we want to make a few changes so that uh, free look actually becomes the mode you look around and interact with in the cockpit. So no, no more holding F and then moving the cursor around. Uh, the idea is more that free look, you're just looking around and you know, seeing the prompts come up um, more naturally. It just, just feels more similar to the, the game when you're on foot and we think it works a lot nicer. Um, in addition to that, uh, you want to have like the MFD screens show the little cursor on it as, it's, uh, as your camera's focusing on it in center screen. Um, and that gives you like a nice accurate way of, of selecting things all in one mode without having to sort of move into a, a different mode of sort of moving the cursor around and the camera's moving slightly with it and yeah, it, it just feels like a, a smoother experience. Is he right? Yeah, so... <laughs> <laughs> well, she made it, so she definitely knows. <laughs> yeah, uh, so we had to com uh, try to compromise a little bit on the dashboards because obviously having the prompts, like, you know, of every single button while you try uh, fly a ship is really not a nice experience. Uh, so yeah, so that's why we you still have to go into interaction mode, so that that way you have like full control of it and you try to minimize the disruption to the player. And yeah, like Chris said, we have a few ideas that we still want to do to make it this experience the best we can. Um, so yeah. How does that does that still include the the physicalized touching and stuff? I can't remember what it's called right now. It had a cool name. We don't have a lot of cool names. That had a cool it's, name. it's not a cool name. Is it interactions? Yeah. Is it interactions? Is that all it was? Or player animated well, interactions. Oh, yeah. Player animated. Uh, or pay. Pay. Yeah, pay. <laughs> Another one. Never mind. <laughs> We're so bad at naming things. Uh, so, yeah, so we still uh, yeah, we have still physical uh, player animated interactions. Uh, we need a we need a cool name, but they are not coming for three twenty three uh, for for, the, for this next release. In in, ter in terms of code, it's not big It's not like a massive change, but the ch the, it's a big effort to bring it to everything we can interact with in the world. We have to have cert certain constraints, 
uh, and the items have to have a specific orientation so the player can like will drive the hand so we can orientate it and uh, yeah so that it's a massive effort from other teams um, so yeah that won't be coming this next release but it's in the works <coughs> Uh, yes, uh, so I've got a message here uh, from, from from Dustin. Uh, he's he's in, he's in, he's a, he's, a, he's a member of our of our team out of the uh, out of the uh, Austin office. Hi, Dustin. <laughs> he wants me to ask you about the BB12, which is that old man maneuvering unit that was that, that was a stretch goal. It's like, are we are we ever are you guys ever are we gonna ever do that? Say yes. Y yes. <laughs> I know it's above your head. I'm just I'm just calling Dustin out. <laughs> Dustin, don't send me crap in the middle of the show. Uh, all right, let's get back to let's get back to some real questions from some real backers like this one, possibly a hijacker. <laughs> if I attach myself to a ship with the push pull mechanics that are coming next, is the intent for the ship to be able to shake me off with enough G's? Or is the ship screwed because once I get a grip, they can't dip? Yeah, I can answer. Just gonna go have a beer. <laughs> <laughs> the username works well with the question as well. Yeah. So yeah, if, if, if you attach, uh, theoretically, we, we still work, it's still work in progress, so you uh -huh. understand. We didn't test it yet. But I can guess it will be a systematic reaction on external G-force. You just pushed from the ship or lose your conscious and yeah, it yeah. will do the work. <laughs> that is the most programmer bullshit answer I've ever yeah. heard. <laughs> I can guess it would, st it, would, it would just systematically work. But, uh, no, that, I'm not making fun of you. That, it's, uh, brilliant. I love it. It's, it's what I get from every programmer I ever talk. He goes, well, yeah, the way we built the system, yeah, it, well, I don't know, let's try it and find out. Yeah. Half the time, that's what the answer is. We talk about it, so, well, let's just try it and see what it does. You know, so, 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 <laughs> so if we attach, again, and again, the, 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 phys the, the hand traversal is not in 323. But when that's there and you attach onto a ship and someone tries to shake you from the ship, you're saying it should throw them or it should not throw them? It should. It should throw them. I believe. All right. All right. Yeah, we, well, you got a while to work on that because that's not in 323. So you got a while to, to work on that. But that is, that, that, that is a beautiful, beautiful programmer answer because that's it's just, I don't know, we just build the systems and we see what happens. It should work. So. Should is our favorite word. <laughs> well, well, you know, I'm having fun, but that's why we build these things systemically. Because, you know, at, at building a game at this size, at this scope, at this scale, you can't hand code every single individual, you know, a, a circumstance and an occasion. You build these things systemically so that the world has an inter the universe has an internal logic, hopefully. At some point, I think, and you can just sort of you can be like, well, you know, based on this and this and this, yeah, it, it should do that. I remember the very first time, the very first time, we ever launched a, a snub craft from a ship that was in quantum. Like we were, we were doing internal testing, and the, and we we just got it was literally like a first like, hey, we've got quantum working, and and Mark Aben goes, what happens if we if we leave <laughs> in quantum, and everybody just kind of looked around. And we're like, I don't know. And so we got in, we got in, and we and, and, and we and we flew out, and the ship stayed in quantum with it. And we were all just like, How cool is that? But that was the people who made it. You know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh my god, how cool is that? You know, and that's that's the beauty. That's one of the reasons I love talking to programmers and and so because when you build systems, it's you can still be surprised. We call that emergent gaming. You know, as far as far when the backers do it. Uh, with us, it's just happy little accidents. <laughs> uh, all right. Wolf Brother 84. Remind me not to do names. Uh, uh, how disruptive are the transitional animations from EVA to standing in gravity? From the clips, it looked almost like the character stops when it enters the gravity field, then loses control of the character while the transition animation is to pivot to your feet down to the surface place. I want to preface this by saying, what you saw in ISC was absolutely work in progress. You're, look, you're looking at a feature that's not scheduled to be live for you know, a couple months yet. So it is still work in progress. But 
how is it supposed to work, that, that transition from EVA down to? Very quick and very seamless. Yeah, that, that's the intent. Um, and that's how it feels as well. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's never going to be 100% uh, without mild vomit inducement. If you're doing like, you know, 180 turn and it, it's intense and acrobatics, right? So what you see on screen is going to, in first person especially, is, is going to um, not always be um, non vomit inducing, but it's meant to be smooth and quick. Yeah, there shouldn't be any sensation of, oh, I'm waiting for the animation to finish. Uh, or, you know, that, that sense of loss of control, it's, it's so snappy that it's, it's not really there. Okay. I even tried it in, like, in, in a game, and it's perfectly fine, to my opinion. You can like, <laughs> land spray in the bullets. Right, you look right down that camera. <laughs> yeah. Getting, it's, like, EVA is perfectly fine. <laughs> <laughs> So you can land spray in your bullets and yeah, it's keep steady position and fire rate. So yeah, it seems fine. Okay. Uh, got another EVA here. Uh, Repheim? Repheim. Repheim. Repheim says, can we use a knife in EVA? And what about other takedowns with fists and weapons and stuff like that? So for 323, um, again, Things are in progress, so we'll see how we go. Uh, but the intent is to have uh, the ability to just do like a simple slash with a knife. Um, uh, going beyond that, uh, 323, that's not going to be anything more involved. Maybe more moving down the line, um, but unsure. Uh, with regards to takedowns, no for 323. Uh, and it, it's obviously something we're thinking about because it's in one of the core things of uh, FPS uh, combat. Um, it's a lot more complicated to do in EVA. Like, if you imagine... Did you, one person's upside down. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Like, if, if, if there's someone in front of me and I'm crouching behind them, it's quite easy to say, like, yep, I'm going to knife them in the back. If, as you say, someone's... There's all sorts of different angles you can approach, and, and that, as a result, so many different animations you need, um, and so many things that maybe feel fine and easy to understand and intuitive in, um, in, in a ground gravity uh, environment that it, it's a lot more difficult to get an idea of what's going on. In EVA. So for now, definitely not for 323, uh, potentially later on. Uh, and unarmed, um, as in, you know, fisticuffs, um, not for 323 either. Uh, the intent is to do something similar so you, to, to, uh, to the, the knife so you get like a simple jab. Um, beyond that, uh, I, I'm not sure. But, you know, uh, we, we will always want to improve things. So we'll, we'll obviously take your feedback into consideration and, and see where we go moving down the line. Basically, I think what we all want is to be able to reenact that knife fight from Eastern Promises just in zero G. I'm, I'm forming a cultural point. If you know, so. you know. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, oh, Gustav Grabowski. There's a name. Good name. <clears throat> uh, will the new Pi... Will the new Pi... Okay. Will the new Pi have a customizable HUD color that players can adjust in their settings? This goes to a bunch of accessibility stuff that, quite frankly, we still have yet to address, but. Yeah, and for, for 323, we don't have that option. Um, but as you say, we really want to address uh, moving forward. Um, I think as well, you mentioned yeah. about styles and stuff. There's forward. also talk of helmet styles affecting the color of your visor and depending on what manufacturer you're wearing, things like that. Um, so that's another consideration for it in future. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I know this is uh, this is a question that comes up a lot, and I'm there are I'm, I'm I I don't I don't suffer from a lot of the things that a lot of folks do, but there there, there are colors in the spectrum that I have trouble you know seeing or whatever. Uh, it's I just want to I just want to say if I can speak for myself, I understand we understand we hear you. It's definitely on the list. Nobody's ever heard a conversation where it's like no, we're not going to do that or stuff like that. Uh, it's just. It's just on a thing of priorities and a thing of people can only work on so many things at one time. Uh, we actually just uh, uh, built out a new uh, UI team in Montreal, in our Montreal studio, to help with the UI team that's here. Uh, so that's so, you know, to help tackle as many of the UI related uh, issues that are still outstanding. So that's not to say this will come closer or anything, just that we're building up those teams so that they can tackle more things. So uh, I promise. If, if anybody gets to announce it before I do, I'll be upset. <laughs> so uh, when I have news, I'll share it. The, the, the giant that is Richard Tyra has told me that he really wants it as well. So accessibility in general, we're going to get a focus at some point. Yeah. Uh, uh, <clears throat> Corporal Bell 
says, uh, while in EVA, if we keep applying thrust from our pack, obviously not indefinitely, will we be able to increase our velocity over time or will there be an enforced limit like ships? But maybe so I covered that. It's about the 10 millisecond. Yeah, yeah. it's the same. Okay. Question. Uh, well, he had a second it's, question. It's probably worth mentioning though that you, we do have this that sense of um, sort of vague Newtonian motion in sense of if I thrust a little bit forward and then stop thrusting, I'll just continue going off forever at that speed unless I introduce another thrust impulse. Uh, so it's it's like that to some degree, and it gives you that sense of oh, if I thrust, I keep going, um, and then if I look around, I, I'm seeing I'm going in that direction still. So you so you get the sense of it. Um, you just can't get yourself up to, you know, eventually you get the light speed right and we don't want to go that far. <laughs> Not with that attitude, Chris. <laughs> uh, is it your intention to develop specialist and or emergency equipment for EVA travel, like reserve gas tanks, specific armor, short duration distance boost capsules for the multi-tool? You've already mentioned some of them, the, the refill canisters for fuel. Yeah, so that, that depends you inject yourself with. Okay. Um, so as, as I mentioned earlier, we, we do want to have uh, th that difference in what I'm wearing affects what I can do. Uh, so you might have um, one EVA like core armor pack that's like quite slim and light, and another one that's a little bulk bulkier and have more fuel. Uh, we're going to have backpacks that can again you know, have more fuel. So the, the sense of bigger is better, and you, you know you can get um, different I items and equipment. Again, not for 323. Everything can EVA in 323. Uh, all, all armor can EVA in 323. Um, so there's yeah the, the sense that you can have different backpacks, different core armor that behave differently and have different um, maybe different thrust. Not sure yet. Um, certainly different fuel. Uh, oh, and and also um, it's probably worth mentioning that. Uh, Again, not in 323, but when your fuel runs out, um, your breathable air gets used instead. So if you're in the middle of nowhere, <laughs> you can opt just to start thrusting with your breathable air. Um, and that's like a double reason behind that. One is it's there, so why can't I use it? So yeah, great, use it, thrust. So you just get, get a bit further. So if your airlock's just within reach, you can get to it. And the other is if you want to sort of try and get somewhere and you can't reach it, you're going to die a lot faster instead of just sort of staying in the middle of nowhere, you know, waiting for half an hour to die. <laughs> uh, we've had a couple of questions that might apply to this in the chat, uh, as, as long as I'm saying our names. Uh, Adusin and Smitty Brewworks both have questions about uh, the effect of weapon, weapons and weapon recoil on EVA. Want to know if they can pull out their FS9 and just, you know, <laughs> instead of tapping their, their air supply, can they pull out and just shoot themselves closer to where they're going. Yeah, I can answer this. So, uh, like right now, in, in lore, we have like idea what thruster pack compensate weapon recoil. So yeah, you keep steady. Uh, it's not working for case if you don't have thruster pack. Uh, so short answer is no, we don't have it yet. But the idea is we have this, this idea and it would be nice to implement maybe someday. So you want it? Uh, well, you, you, you want it, weapon recoil affecting? Yeah, probably. So you can use your weapon to just give you a supply right. or throw things. All right. so, so you heard it. Uh, uh, Gennady says you're going to be able to do the Quake 3 rocket jump <laughs> <laughs> in EVA. He, he just said it. Take it to Reddit. But again, not for 323. Not for 323. <laughs> but, uh, as if there's not a whole buttload of stuff in 323. Should I put mean, that in the box. Alpha 323. <laughs> a whole buttload of stuff. It should be worth mentioning as well, but like when for the next few releases in terms of EVA and that's the thing, we're not considering that for what we're working on immediately. So if we do do something like that, it'll be further off for sure. Okay. And uh, and and if the patch comes out and the trailer's not called a whole buttload of stuff, you know they ignored it. <laughs> Bon Wick. Oh, uh, nope. He's asking the melee question again. We already asked, covered that. Um, Skyfire. Can we activate the decoupled mode in EVA to be able, for example, to quickly place the, our feet in front and avoid hitting the avatar's head against an obstacle? Yeah, I can answer it. I even show. <laughs> so you want to show? Uh, he wants to show. All right, you've been good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You get your choice. 
You can, you can choose the little, you can choose the little uh, 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 cat person, or you can choose the horagon. Uh, I guess. Oh, you don't this want the one? horagon? So? Just alone with my horagon, like always. So yeah, this figure doesn't have um, moving arms, but yeah. So when we approach <laughs> obstacle, right now, we have a. Uh, weapons in front of us, like, we just, uh, s to, not, to, not to get bumped with the head, yeah, we put the head in front of us, and also we redirect, so we're not just like, boom, <laughs> <laughs> we do like, and keep flying if we have some momentum in this direction, so it's, yeah, that's basically the answer on this. So you, so you can't you can go feet first if you want? Uh, theoretically, yes, but you don't need to. You go head, uh, hands first. So it's well, maybe logical. somebody wants to do like a giant EVA flying drop kick and just go feet first. Uh -huh. You don't know what these people. You don't want know what these people think, dude. I know what these people think. It's bad. <laughs> <laughs> but just to clarify, for three twenty three, no. <laughs> all you're going to do for the rest of the show. Eroyuki <laughs> um, uh, writes, uh, as, my eyesight is getting better. Uh, as it is now, holding the F key allows us to use our mouse pointer on ship MFTs. Not only can we click on any part of the screen with a high degree of precision, we can also click and drag and adjust sliders, blah, blah, blah. Uh, isn't this the same question before? I did touch on the MFT things when we yeah. were talking about this. Yeah. So you it's, want to pick this question, you pick the same question. I, I can let me talk about it a little bit more if you want. Sure. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, as, as I mentioned, you will be going to, well, uh, in a later release, we're looking into having the free look mode, uh, have you look around the cockpit rather than using the, the cursor to look at all the different interaction points. So we're just actually looking at them in almost sort of fluid motion. Um, and then as part of that, we want to have the cursor show on the MFDs. So if you imagine you've got your, your visor, your, your view on your monitor, the center of that will dictate where the cursor goes. Uh, and it's just as accurate as when you're using it in interaction mode right now, if, if not a bit better, because it's, you're focused on it always. Um, and then also at some point we're looking at being able to go into like a, a focus mode onto each MFD. So whilst you're looking around the cockpit, you can quickly interact with interaction points with the prompt popping up and the cursor on the MFDs, click on things, drag on sliders. You can also then zoom into the, uh, the MFDs. Uh, again, not for 323, um, but hopefully soon TM. Carga uh, 98531 uh, says uh, in the chat here says, How much is speed a factor in EVA transition to gravity? If you're going to face, are you more likely to face blind? So there is like a reaction time you get when you're coming into, again, this isn't 323 because we're not attaching, um, but when you come into uh, attach to a surface, uh, part of what informs you that's going to happen is you're at the moment at least, your hands rise up. Um, but we haven't done it based on distance, we've done it based on time to hit. So if you're coming in really fast, the, the amount of time you get to press the input in response to that to, to attach uh, is roughly the same as if you're coming in really slow. So yes, it does have an impact, but we're trying to mitigate it by having more time to react. So if you press the button at the right time, you'll attach. Um, and then the manner in which you attach, what we want at least is that um, different animation plays. So you might actually lose control for a little bit longer than you would because you've, you know, the animation you're playing is really selling the fact that you've just impacted the surface um, versus if you're going slower, you'll you know, get control back a lot faster uh, and the animation will be a lot shorter. Because you know there are going to be people. There are going to be people that, that, that jump into something really fast and get up to 36 milliseconds and then throw themselves out of the ship at the waiting hangar of, of, of an A1 to see just how hard they can hit the deck <laughs> of the A1. And what I'm not even grabbing, just to see it, just to test that transition after we were talking about it. So at, at the, at Kennedy, at 36 milliseconds, Wait, flying through space, Wait, die. it's uh, the deck of an A1. Instant death. Instant death? <laughs> I imagine so. Quite possibly. Yeah. We're going to break really? your neck and, yeah. You know. I, I, I've, I've, I've seen people jump out of ships and fall down through orbit and land on the ground and bounce. <laughs> That's going to kill them? Well, I keep that. But no. 
But again, that's the systemic stuff, right? Like a fall damage is based on, I think, velocity rather than your falling. So if you're hitting something really quick in space, that's the same as falling really quick somewhere else. So there is a good chance you'll kill yourself. Carga uh, says that is exactly all capitals what I am thinking. <laughs> 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 I'm on year 10, people. I know all you reprobates. Because <laughs> they're me. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see. What else do we got? Uh, Pro Hydro says, can you still zoom while in EVA and FP, uh, EVA? I like when he's holding F in the current and scrolling in the current system. Yes. Okay. Good answer. What are uh, SMEV? I'm not sure that's a good word. SMEV says, what are some of the edge cases or even funny bugs the team is trying to work out of the EVA T2 system? You guys have, must have seen some terrors. Mostly killing myself by mistake. So, yeah, I can. Uh, EVA in itself, like it's complex systems with a uh, like we can, we try to uh, combine coupled and decoupled modes for just movement and for rotation. It's an uh, interesting combination of like regular FPFs rotation, but as we in space and rotate in any direction, also 360, full 360 rotation. Uh, so yeah, it's full of edge cases. Uh, about saying what fun bugs we have, uh, not too much except you fence planting most of the time, in at least in all the way. Uh, I can recall one in when we work on attached to the surface. Imagine you're flying through the debris, metal plates, and boxes and stuff and you press attach and you just attach to some small metal plate which is rotating and you inherit its rotation and you start to rotate as well like it's yeah it's weird anyone else i think the most frustrating one was every now and then you sort of attach but flip onto the other side of the surface so you'd just be killing yourself every time basically um yeah, that, that, that was more frustrating than funny, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh, been a fairly awkward one in general because it's the development of it has gone on for a while and there's been different approaches tried and things like that. And it's yeah. finally we're at a good place with it. Um, but it's been awkward to get to this point. <laughs> I, I have this memory. I have this memory of, I, th I think it might have been in one of the builds when we were doing uh, uh, a Hold the Line, quite frankly. But when the EVA guy was rotating, the hands weren't. So he was turning into Mr. Fantastic where the arms were just getting <laughs> longer and longer and, and rotating around him as he was going. And, and like that's what I, I picture. I wish I had that footage because I'd show it to my enemies. Uh, <laughs> but that's all right. Um, uh, Crown8 asks in the chat, uh, have you discovered anything during the development of EA, uh, EVA that has solved problems elsewhere or created, or created new ones <laughs> or, or new ideas? Well, I'll do new ideas or new problems. Um, has, has it helped out AI or any of the other missions or anything like that? Has there been any other benefits that other people have told you? I think prone is the biggest um, one, right? Yeah, because yeah. it's all shared. Like, I'm speaking from a layman's point of view, but like animations, I know like, um, Jens Heinrich, uh, animator on, on the, the feature, he, he found that working for one really helps out the other and, and like problems of how to blend various different animations based on a 360 uh, rotation. Uh, it's, it's very similar problems so it's definitely helped out in that respect. Yeah, both have the prone pose and keep your camera in place while you're rotating and things yeah. like that so it's a very similar approach between the two features. And it's probably saved similar. a bit of time. Yeah. I mean, I have to imagine level design is probably happy because they can make passageways that are much smaller and not don't have to accommodate the standing tall EVA for single. Absolutely, issue. yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think our, our smallest metric that we adhere to is, is crouch. So we didn't really have any um, 
in prone environments, but, but crouch environments would just be impossible in EVA effectively without, you know, lots of pain and suffering. So yeah, absolutely. Um, moving forward, when we start to eventually have ships turning the gravity off and that kind of thing, could, that could have led to all sorts of hor horrors. But now, it, this transition should be pretty seamless and, you know, feel good. So. Uh, visor with a seven in the middle somehow. And the chat says, uh, "Please talk about exiting ship in Atmo. Is there any new? Is there? Is there? Is does EVA affect you in Atmo? Is there a, a, a new or more interesting falling animation when you're going to die? Or not in three twenty? It's not very physically. Uh, yeah, it's extravehicular <laughs> and it's an activity. Jumping out of your ship to your death is an extravehicular activity. Maybe not one you want to embrace, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's good to have some like gliding or something. But we don't have it just for now." I would, I, I, I would just, I would just like, I would just like a, 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 a more noticeable "I'm going to die" animation. Just, <laughs> just, just like flailing, trying to, trying to stop yourself, and then eventually, you know, you just kind of resign yourself and just like lean into it. And, and there, there's a whole world we could do with people jumping out of planes. We, uh, we, uh, uh, back in, gosh, it was Gamescom 2016, whatever. We, uh, during those Gamescom 2016 live streams, we invented the the Drake interplanetary suborbital uh, uh, jump and release, where you know it was the very first very first planet we were playing. The first thing we did was we went up to the top of, of Atmo and jumped out, and then tried to have somebody fly down below in a cutlass with the door open and try to catch us before we hit the ground. We blew up a lot of cutlasses. There. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, let's see what else. What other questions? We only have a few more minutes, guys. Um, uh, uh, Edmund, nope, oh, we're going too fast. Ed Mo oh man, I'm not going to try it. It ends with Loco. Ed Loco. I'm just going to call you Ed Loco. Will we be able to EVA inside our own ships uh, with the gra probably after when the gravity is being able to turn off? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. That's the, that's the intent. And again, going back to post three twenty three, um, the sort of the ecosystem of uh, how you traverse in zero G EVA. Yes, um, we've got a system that is actually going out in 323 where we tag up rooms of different sizes. So if you're in quite a small confined space, you don't sort of move forward and then start dinging off the walls. Uh, it reduces your max speed. Um, so yeah, absolutely. Uh, and the intent is that we'll have this suite of traversal options where you can use your thrusters. If you have EVA thrusters, you can use your um, tractor beam to move yourself around, attach the services, again, not in 323, uh, move around, um, <laughs> launch yourself off them, um, and then there's also another feature called for handholds where you can grab onto stuff, again, not 323, and you can jump between those or, you know, there's supposed to be a whole suite of options um, inside as well as out. Um, David, uh, sw switch to uh, Chris's camera, but turn the bug off in the corner real quick. Yeah. Chris, look right at your camera like this. And this is so you can get a clean meme image that says not in 323. <laughs> there you go. For, for all you can make yourself a clean meme image. All right, you can go back to normal. Um, Phoenix Rising in the, in the chat uh, asked a question I'm going to answer. Uh, will Saddleball be the end goal for EVA? Uh, no. We've actually, <laughs> I've answered this, I feel like I've answered this at least once a year, every year since 2016. Uh, the, the entire idea of Saddleball, outside of the lore and everything, as far as developing it, was as a test bed, you know, in, as an arena commander mode, as a test bed to begin the development and testing of EVA mechanics way back in 2015 because we didn't have the PU. Development of the PU came much, fast, came much faster than we expected. We launched the PU in November, December of 2015, I can't remember uh, specifically, but once we had a persistent universe in which to develop and test uh, EVA with everybody, uh, the use of Saddleball became non-existent. So it's a fun thing for our lore and whatnot, but that's been off the plate for going on almost a decade at this point. But it keeps popping up. There's a lot of people who, who you know, they grab onto that idea and they're like, yeah, I want, I want to play this zero G, you, you, you know, a football game, whatever. And, you know, it's a, it's a cool idea. It's just not the game we're making. We've already got two other pretty big games we're making. It's not to say it won't ever happen. I'm not, I've been here long enough to know that I'm not gonna, that I'm not gonna sit here and say it's never gonna happen, but there are no current plans for it. Uh, let's see, uh, people are asking about wingsuits now after the- uh, <laughs> What have you done? Yeah. <laughs> Come on, a wingsuit would be cool. I want one. Next, 
next logical thing. And, and if anybody would work on it, it would kind of be your team, I would imagine, I quite possibly. likely. Eventually, maybe, yeah. Just, all right, we're, 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 we're off the reservation here. <laughs> <laughs> Parachutes. Parish, some, never some, something, never. something, yeah. something. So when I jump out of when I, when I, we do jump out of our ship in atmosphere or whatever, yeah, well, you jacked out of like a single seer, right? You, you don't yeah, yeah. die, and then just fall to the ground and die. It's 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 something that we want to address eventually for sure. Yeah, uh, it's something that's been discussed. No, oh, I know it's been discussed. No idea when, <laughs> but it's it's something we want. It's been discussed. It's <laughs> been discussed so long. Even Daisy knows about it. Look at Daisy and tell her. There's, <laughs> Parachutes. Hey, we're on the ninth floor. Chris, parachutes. <laughs> Rich, parachutes. All right, that's it, everybody. Thank you for joining us for Star Citizen Live. Uh, I've been your host, Jared Huckabee. Uh, again, thank you to Kian and Chris and Inez and Gennady for taking the time to, uh, uh, out of the end of your week, to be here. Gennady, you do not get to keep the figure. You have to leave it here. Um, <laughs> Uh, we got a couple things going on. I think the Lunar New Year promotions are still going on. Coramore is still going on. So you can check those out on the robertspaceindustries.com website. Uh, there's some real interesting testing going on on the EPTU at the moment. Uh, you could find out more about that if you're part of that project and if you're uh, part of that uh, 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 whole endeavor and if you're not ask your friends it's it's pretty cool i've been seeing some of the images and videos uh, online and it's uh, some pretty exciting stuff there uh and then uh don't forget we come back next week with another episode of isc next week's isc is more stuff actually in 323 so you're not going to be involved in this one chris uh th this this is uh this, the next week's show is about master modes and precision targeting and weapon changes that are precipitated by precision targeting and the big gimbal changes uh, that are coming to almost every spaceship in the Star Citizen uh, universe there. So check that out next week. And then we'll be right back here for another episode of Star Citizen Live. I have no idea uh, who's on it yet. Um, but that's pretty much all. I just basically got to go and track those. Uh, we do have a raid here. Um, we are raiding uh, Austtech. Uh, is what I'm being told uh, by by Masters Jake Bradley. Uh, so uh, uh, say you don't have to stay there, but say hi, be nice, wipe your feet. You know, don't track any dirt in. And uh, when you go there, uh, when you, if you do decide to do the raid, uh, jump in with a big, loud, and capital letters. Not in 323. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week, everybody. Take care.